Erdy. Um. Okay. Okay. Welcome to Star Trek Asterisk, the weekly podcast where we watch Star Trek and then talk about it. I am Steve. You can find me at Lord Steve on Twitter. I'm Zach. I come from a magical land of unicorns and gumdrops and oh, and then there is this one demonic cat. Yeah, his name is Roused Hour. That's accurate. Yeah. Um, let's see. This week we watched Coming of Age, Heart of Glory, and The Arsenal of Freedom, all episodes of season one of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Which um, is slowly coming to a close. Slowly coming to a close. Yeah. Thank you. As well as Tasha Yar's life. Spoiler alert. Oh, damn it, Steve. Sorry. I don't um, know. <laughs> I mean, what? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, and uh, we were going to do these last week, but things happened. Yeah, the whole thing kind of melted down on us. Yeah. So we called the whole thing off, and now we're doing it this week. Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh, what was I going to say? All right. Well, let's just get into it. Okay. Um, so, in Coming of Age, it's kind of a Wesley story. Yeah. Um, it actually is very much a Wesley story. Yeah. And it starts off with... Um, well, he, he talks to his friend who's, like, in love with him. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, this, this kid didn't get into didn't test well enough to go to this other test that where if you pass that test you'll get into Starfleet Academy. He didn't do well on the pretest. Yeah, right. And so Wes- he has to take the semester over. Right. And Wesley did. So he's going to regionals. Um what really? Regionals? <laughs> Is that how we're doing that now? Yeah, sure. Uh Wesley's going and this kid's not and then Wesley's say, Oh, I'm sorry, it could happen to anyone. Uh, this has never happened to me before. Oh, no. So um he goes down to this planet and there's like three other people there. One of them is some kind of alien, and the other one is Vulcan, and there's this this girl there who apparently thinks that Wesley's cute. Um Basically, they they go through the testing, and um, Wesley is most most uh, anxious about the psychological test because he has no idea what he's supposed to be afraid of. Right, and that's that's what it's going to uh, test him about. So he's uh, after after a few tests, he's sitting in the holodeck, kind of wondering what what can I how can I study for this. Yes. How can I, what, what images should I bring up to scare myself? Um, and Worf comes in there and helps them and says, well, this, this test, even when I took it, it, um, they, they, they dug deep into your brain to find out what really gets you inside there. So, um, and he's like, well, I thought Klingons didn't have any fear. He's like, only a fool fears nothing. <laughs> yes. So that's how Worf do. Right. Um, so then he goes back down and um, they're t- t- taking the psychological um, evaluation. Bef- but before this, he's hel- he helped out the uh, the alien. Yeah, I forget his name. Yeah. Mordok or something like that. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, he helped him out and uh, now the- Mordok is coming out of the psychological test. And he looks rough, dude. He looks like all He looks like all hell up. broke loose in there. And so Wesley goes into the room and there's just this chair. So he sits down and, and like waits. Ten seconds later he's like, Has everybody forgotten about me? <laughs> Is there anybody out there? <laughs> um nice. And uh all of a sudden explosion. Kaboom, and he's like, Oh god, what happened? And he runs out and there's nobody there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Hey, hey somebody, there's there's been a there's been an accident in the environmental chamber. Help! Help! <laughs> and it couldn't possibly be a test, because why would it be? <laughs> and so he opens the door, and there are two guys in there. One's stuck in the back, um, because he, he's afraid to come out. But the other guy actually has like a has like one of these giant conduit pipes on top of him. Yeah. yeah. And so Wesley has to choose. So he chooses the guy that's that's trapped because the other guy he could at least get himself out. Yeah, you know. 
but the guy who's trapped, he he has to help the guy out. So he helps the guy out, and the other guy's like, "Whoa, what about me? What about me?" He goes, "You're not injured. Get up and get out." He's like, "No, I don't wanna." <laughs> and Wesley helps the guy out, and then everything suddenly stops, and the the instructor that's been giving them the, the test, that's been administering the test, he walks up and goes, "Good job," <laughs> and. Uh, he goes, oh, I understand now. It was my test. <laughs> and then the yes. other guy walks out like, thanks a lot, jerk. <laughs> but uh, So, yeah, he, he passes that test, but he doesn't pass overall. Right. Um, Mordock, which, I, yeah. Something like that, yeah. Um, he actually scores just higher than Wesley, and he is accepted into the academy. And he is the first of his species mm -hmm. accepted into the Academy. So it's a big momentous occasion for Starfleet. Yes, and for his species. And for his species. Um, meanwhile, back on the Enterprise, Picard is going through a test of his own. Yeah. Um, one of his old friends, Admiral Quinn, has come aboard with uh, Lieutenant Commander Remick. 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 Oh, and Remick is just a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, he's totally like a jerk. jerk and a half. Uh, Quinn says that he thinks there's something wrong on the Enterprise. So Remick is tasked with finding out what that thing is. Yeah. So he's going around and judging everyone and being a fly on the wall. And, and basically, questioning. He's, he's, he's going through and he's questioning everybody else about the captain, like yeah. specifically about this one incident. Well, it's several incidents. So he basically goes throughout the episodes that have happened so far. Well, yeah, but there are, there are a couple of, of certain things that he focuses on. Yeah, well, yeah, true. Um, and then he gets to Riker, and Riker's like, Listen, if you have something to ask the captain, bring him in here and ask him, and ask him about his log entries and something. So... Uh, after a few more questions, he finally does talk to the captain. The captain does his best to explain away, explain everything, and everything checks out at the end. And uh, but but Picard is getting fed up with with all of the questioning, so he goes to Admiral Quinn and says, "Listen, I'm 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 through with all of this, all of the aggravation that this and is all putting. the BS that you've been putting me and my crew through." Yeah, yeah. So. So Admiral Quinn drops the act and says, okay, Remick, get in here. And uh, Remick explains, you know what? I didn't find anything wrong. This is a fine ship. In fact, I'd like to serve on the ship later on if it's possible. And Picard's like, puh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Quinn explains that, okay, good. Nothing is wrong because um, I've been thinking that maybe there's some kind of conspiracy going on in Starfleet and I needed to know who to trust. Uh, and I want, I want you as one of my most trusted friends to be in a power position to know, uh, so you can report on what's actually going on in Starfleet. And that, that particular position he says to be put in is, uh, like the headmaster of the Academy or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically to be the guy over Starfleet Academy as a right, whole. Right, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's that's, that's a, a huge step up for him. It's a good position. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. So uh, Picard says, well, I have to think about it. And, of course, we know and that eventually that's going to mean no. Um, and uh, at about this time, Wesley comes up, and Wesley and Picard have a chat. And Wesley tells him he didn't pass, and Picard says, well, you know, Neither did I the first time. But don't tell anyone. But you shut your whore mouth. <laughs> shut up, Wesley. <laughs> so, so they have kind of a bonding moment about their about the tests they they went through, and that was the end. Yeah, it. I'm just I don't I don't get a hard on for Wesley episodes. <laughs> I mean, I understand that you know it's it's there is the whole thing about you know um, it's. A, it's it's a dual storyline episode, yeah. like a lot of them have been so far. But it's kind of more intermingled than most it is. of them have been. It is because they, they, thematically, they, if not anything else, right? Because they both focus on Starfleet Academy, you mm -hmm. know, 
it really they and focus on somebody, one of our key cast members getting into Starfleet Academy. One is a student <laughs> yeah. and one at the top. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you're kind of approaching Starfleet Academy from both angles. Yeah, and being tested for it. But uh yeah, it's it just it was interesting, but there was I don't think it was for me. Yeah. Eh. It's not for everyone, I suppose. No. I didn't mind it that much. Yeah. It was I I kind of enjoyed seeing him seeing Wesley go through uh, his test and um, you know finding more about him yeah uh, but the next episode um, was nothing like that the next episode is the heart of glory and um, it's well it's a Klingon episode it is it's a wharf episode however we take about 15 minutes until we actually get to the Klingons yeah, yeah. We actually timed it to what thirteen. Yeah, yeah. So they they find the ship in the neutral zone, a Ferengi cargo ship. No, I, think, I don't think it's. They claim it's Ferengi that attacked them. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a. Let's see. Does it just say cargo ship? Uh. Well. Yeah, I guess so. Oh no no, Talarian. Oh, it's a Tolarian cargo ship. Okay, okay. Tolarian freighter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they find this ship in the neutral zone. It's like, why? Why is this in the neutral zone? That's not good. So they go and check it out. There are no uh, no life signs, but the the uh, engine is critical or something. So yeah, and the, the hole's signs, about to uh, yeah the hole's about to rupture. Yeah, so all the interference could mean that there could be life signs down there. So they have to go check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, they uh, um, let's see, Jordy goes along with the OA team to check out the situation, and he uses his little what do they call it visual. Transponder or something like that. Some something weird, yeah. Visual acuity transmitter. Yes, that, ooh, yeah, that's right. It had a fancy name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's the VAT. <laughs> but this thing basically takes what he sees in and the visor, transmits it back to the back to the ship. Yep. Um. And we find out that what he sees is like a whole range of things. Yeah, there's there's all different levels of light and like. He can. Um, there's like spectrography and mm-hmm. all kinds of crap mm-hmm. that he sees. So the first 13 minutes of the episode is a Jordy episode. Pretty much, we're finding out what he sees, and then we get to the Klingons. We find the Klingons, and I guess it's I guess it's their uh, their uh, sick bay or something. Right, and, and they've got one that's about to die. Right, and then two others that are there. Mm-hmm. Um, so. They uh, they end up the one they they have to carry the one out, and at the last minute, Lieutenant Yar, despite all the interference, is able to beam them back when it seemed like they they exploded with the ship. Yes, but they all made it back. Mm-hmm. But soon after, the the injured Klingon dies. You know, they they there wasn't anything they could do for him. It was too late. So the other two, they're like, look, we're tired. We just had this battle. Yada yada yada. Let's rest, and then we'll talk more later. And so Picard goes, I don't think we're getting the whole story here. Right. And he's like, we'll deal with this later. In the meantime, these two Klingons are talking to Worf, and they're like, hey, you know, you're a, you're, you're a, you're a real Klingon, right? You haven't just been hanging out with these sissy pants humans all the time and becoming <laughs> one of them. He's like, don't you talk about me like that. He, they're like, ha-ha, you are still a Klingon. <laughs> so you can get angry. So... um they wanted to talk about what they uh, um, what they were doing, but they were afraid of making Worf angry. Right. Because what they were up to, as it turns out, um, they were being a little sneaky. They were a couple of renegades. Mm-hmm. They were fighting their own kind. They were. They were. They were trying to incite a civil war. And uh, they wanted to, to kind of single-handedly rule that entire quadrant. They were basically... Um uh, upset at the Kittimer Accords, like they 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 didn't want to have peace with anyone. They wanted to stick to their Klingon background and have make war. Yeah, yeah. 
So that's what they were going, and and they were trying to incite Worf to to think the same way. Yeah, they they were trying to join, have him join their cause. It's like, well, aren't you a real Klingon? You know, or where's your pride? Where's your sense of 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 duty to your own people? Yes. And he's like, hold on a second now. <laughs> um, first of all, where's your honor? Yes. You know, where is your sense of loyalty? Where's where's all this? If you want to talk about being a true Klingon, look at yourself. What's what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. So while the Klingons are explaining this to Worf, um, one of the Klingon higher ups or something—I don't know—yeah, some, another some um, other Klingon comes in, hails Picard, and tells Picard what's going on. Like these guys are renegades. We need we need to take them. And he's like, "All right, well, let me see about that because we have them here right now." So he's like, "Okay, Yar, you get a security team and you go get these guys, and you know, put them in the brig, basically, because." These guys are trouble, now yeah. we know. Yeah. And uh, so they go down, and they're able to f- take them, and um, they lock them up. Well, it turns out one of them has parts, and he puts together a gun. He snuck a gun on board. Well, they both did. They're, they're both, like, around on their belt and stuff. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Was it both of them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so they put together their guns, they break the force field that's on the door, <laughs> and um, they make a break for it. Well, one of them gets shot in the incident and dies, and so the other one, he goes you know, to engineering to the dilithium chamber, and he's like, okay, here's how this is going to work. <laughs> you give me access to the battle bridge so I can go and take this big, nasty, nice ship of yours and go break stuff and rule the, 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 the galaxy, or we all die. Right. And so Picard's like, we got to do something about this. And Yar's like, we got to take him right now. And Picard's like, well, let's wait it out. And, and Worf's standing there. He's like, uh-uh. He's a Klingon. He'll wait until just long enough for him to realize that it's no longer to his advantage to wait, and then he'll blow us up. Mm-hmm. And he'll be done with us. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, Worf goes and approaches him and talks to him. The guy makes one final appeal to Worf, and Worf's like, no, buddy, that's, you, you, no, being a Klingon, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and he goes to attack him. They fall, the glass on the floor breaks, and they fall down to the lower level, and the guy's basically, like, knocked out. Yeah. And so uh, they send him. Well, he dies at that point, right? Huh? He dies at that point, doesn't he? He, he dies, like, r- right after that, yeah. And yeah. so they, they, they go back up to the bridge, and... Uh, they contact the other Klingon commander that was looking for him and said... Um, he did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Where's Bean? He did. <laughs> he said, no, the, the other two, they, they died in, uh, in uh, the process of trying to apprehend them. And uh, he goes, Worf, did they, how, did, how did they die? And he goes, they died with honor. Well, they died well. Well, they died well, said. yeah. I don't know about how much honor they had. Well, whatever. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they died well and he's like, um, well do whatever you want with the bodies. They are empty shells. Yeah. And, um, see you later. And that was that. Yeah. That's basically it. Yeah. Uh, this is a good episode for Klingons though, because, um, we, uh, we get to learn about Worf's past a little bit. Yep. We get to know he was raised by humans after, um, his, his colony was attacked. Mm-hmm. Um, and we get to we get to see up until this point we had only known Klingons from um, the original series that they were battle battle people they were warlike they were warriors yeah and now now we get to uh, the next generation and there's a Klingon on the bridge right you know what's so up with that where's this guy coming from and now now we learn okay they had made peace because mm-hmm. because the the well, the undiscovered country that hadn't come out yet. That, that nobody knows about the Kinemore Accords. Right, right. And so, so what's what's going on here is suddenly we realize, wait a second, the Klingons and the Federation are actually playing nice. Yeah. And it's because they both realized, oh, the Romulans are dicks. <laughs> Those are the real assholes around here. Yes. So they basically say, okay, let's <laughs> stop fighting and we'll deal with the Romulans. Yes. Um. But yeah, this is a, this is a good episode to understand that war ha- or uh, peace has been made, but not everyone is particularly happy about that. Right. Um. Yeah, that's good. 
Yeah, Anything I else thought, to say about it? I thought this was a pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you said, we learn more about Worf and his past. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a richer sense of Klingon culture. Yes. Um, and we see how they've evolved over the last hundred or so years. Correct. Um, and it's it's just it's really good to see that they have sort of evolved because now you know now that you think about it, um, Klingons have sort of stepped up as far as their place in the Star Trek universe. Right. And really, the Ferengi are the new Klingons. Well, they be- intend to be. Well, I mean, <laughs> the way we the way we know them at this point, yeah. You know, they're they're very their their backstory is really simplistic. To, yeah. So far, all we know is. They're money grubbing cheats, and that's that's all we know. We don't we don't have any real culture on them yet. Yeah. Whereas um, the Klingon thing was battle, right? The Ferengi thing, thing is money. Is money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's that episode. Um, the next one is the Arsenal of Freedom. The Arsenal of Freedom. You want to start this one out? Yeah. Uh, so we have a Federation ship that apparently crashed on this planet. And we're going to look for them because, hey, that's what we do, you know, search and rescue. Yeah. So we get to the where they're supposed to be and they get hailed from the planet, which is odd because there's no life signs on immediately on the planet. There's Intelligent nothing, life signs. Yes. There's nothing running. Like they can't, you know, really see anything. Right. And they get the hail and it turns out. It's a sales guy. <laughs> it's a recorded message from a sales guy. Uh-huh. And it turns out this planet, what was the name of the planet? Uh, Minos. Minos. Minos is what they call the... The, uh, what, the, what the Arsenal it? of Freedom. The Arsenal of Freedom. Okay, yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay, so... And basically what they did was, these people that lived on this planet, they developed and sold... War weapons, like they perfected this amazing weapon that adapted and could basically take out anybody that they uh, that you 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 sicked on it. Mm-hmm. So, sicked. okay, great. Sicked it on. Sick. Yes. <laughs> yes. See. See. On which you synced it. Sicked it. Sick. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Whatever. The thing would go kill stuff when you told it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, great, but we don't care. Um, so they turn off the recording, and they decide, okay, well, let's go down there and sort of investigate and see what's going on, because if this thing is still running, maybe there's other stuff that's down there running, and maybe somebody's alive. Um, so they get down there, and they start to look around. A minimal away team at first. Right, right, right. And um, what was it? It was um, Riker and Data and Riker, Yar. Data and Yar. And so they're looking around. And it's like, okay, well, there doesn't seem to be much down here. And then the guy that's the captain of the ship that crashed, he shows up mm-hmm. and he starts talking to Commander Riker because they're good friends. Yeah. And so he's talking to him, and you know, he's there's something weird on his face. He's like, "Are, are you okay? Do you need medical attention?" He's like, "No, I'm fine." And so. Uh, he goes, he's like, well, why did you come? He's like, well, we came to rescue you. You know, we we heard you crashed and we wanted to come, you know, get you guys out. And he's like, um, on what ship did you come? <laughs> and at, right about that time, Picard buzzes him and says, um, there's no life signs on that planet. Aside from you guys. Mm-hmm. Aside from our away team, nobody else is alive down there. And Riker just kind of looks over at his buddy, and he goes, "Okay." <laughs> and then, and uh, Riker's like, "We came on the lollipop. <laughs> it's a good ship. It's a good ship." <laughs> <laughs> and so, he, uh, um, he keeps asking him. He's like, "What is the armament of this ship?" <laughs> and he kind of looks at him. He's like, "Why would you need to know?" He's like, "It's important that I know what is the armament." And Data walks up and goes, "Um." There's no life here. And Riker's like, yeah, I know. He's like, so what's the armament of your ship? He goes, ten. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Six. What are you even saying? And then they figure out, you know, they, they it reveals itself to be a hologram. Mm-hmm. And there are these, like, egg things with tails that, like, um, that are the, the defense mechanism for this planet. 
So they start fighting with those. And uh, Picard and Crusher are like, okay, we got to get down there and figure out what the hell's going on. So they go down, and they're wandering around, and whoop, they fall into a hole. Whoops. Yeah, and not only do they fall, but Dr. Crusher, like, she fucks herself up pretty bad. Yeah, she breaks an arm and a leg. Yeah, so she's got, like, blood gushing everywhere. Mm -hmm. So Picard fixes up the arm, doesn't realize the leg until way later, and by this time, Dr. Crusher's lost a lot of blood, she's starting to go into shock, and she's probably concussed, so she can't, you know, close her eyes, go to sleep or anything, because... Uh uh-uh right so picard's got to keep her awake and stop both of these wounds and find a way out and then find a way out so he gets the arm fixed and then he finds out later oh there's a leg too (laughs) and so um he uh he he finds there's a root that's that's growing in there Mm -hmm. and because her grandmother helped colonize this other planet um, she knows about it and then that it has clotting properties. Mm-hmm. So he gets it all, you know, fixes up the leg. So at this point, he's just trying to keep her, you know, awake and, and coherent. Meanwhile, up on the surface, um, Data and Riker and Yar are fighting these things. And they've already fought off one wave of them. The next wave has come out and it's got shields. And so they fight it off. And... Uh, then a third wave comes at them and data's like these things are coming every 12 minutes so we got to do something about this the third wave comes and they barely kill it right and they're like okay this next one we can't handle that because it's getting stronger every single time so let's fix this right now well meanwhile picard stumbles on this little view screen that's like hiding under the dirt and he touches it and then like this whole console lights up down in this cavern where they fell and then sales guy shows up and sales guy's like, Hey, do you like the demonstration of our weapon system? Pretty nifty, huh? Hell no, we don't. <laughs> and he's like, no, turn it off. He's like, but why? Then you don't sit, get to see how awesome it is. <laughs> he's like, because it's attacking my people. He's like, I know, isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> so sales guy hologram is oh, useless. Man. Yeah. And, um, uh, the, uh, the others actually end up finding them and they're like, Hey, we're down here. So data jumps down and he's like, hi, how are you guys? <laughs> I'm doing great. And, uh, Picard's like, yeah, we're doing kind of shitty. So data pulls out, you know, a couple of tools and he starts to get crusher stabilized. And then, um, he, they go over to kind of examine the console to see, you know, what they can do to turn this thing off. Because by this time, it's about two minutes before it's going to launch that fourth wave. Yeah. And according to Sales Guy Hologram, that fourth wave, that's it. They're done. Yeah. By that time, it has fully adapted. And, yeah, we don't care. We're going to blow you <laughs> up. Which sucks because guess what? Up around the planet where the, the Enterprise is orbiting, they've been fighting with one of these things that they can't see. Yes. Because it's cloaked. Yes. So Jordy's in charge up there, and he's like, "All right, we got to figure this thing out." And then the guy that's down, the chief engineer at this point, he actually outranks Jordy, but Jordy's in charge. Right. So Jordy's like, "All right, listen here, motherfucker, I'm running this right now, and um, until Captain Picard or Commander Riker get back, I'm not relinquishing control, because I'm they put me in charge for a reason." He's like, "I outrank you." He's like. And I'm running the ship. So go away. Deal with it. <laughs> Deal with it, Shades. <laughs> so um so he's like he's like, look, we need to get out of here. He's like, Yeah, well, we we're gonna try to fight this thing one last time, which they do, and they're unsuccessful. And uh Jordy's like, Alright, we gotta get out of here. And then he's like, Well, where are you going? We can't just leave them on the planet. He's like Shut up. <laughs> if we didn't leave, we'd have gotten blown up. Oh, so man. they leave. They get a safe distance away. And they do for the second time so far in the series, set twice in one season, <laughs> they separate the saucer section. That way they can leave the rest of the crew out of harm's way while they take a skeleton crew back with all the big guns and try to fight this thing off. And Jordy's like, I has idea. <laughs> so... um they, they're on their way back, and finally, Picard and Data are down there looking through the schematics of this thing. They can't get the guy to shut it off. And Picard's like, wait, 
He's like, we'll buy one. We'll just, just turn it off. We'll buy it. He's like, oh, excellent. He's like, so you can stop the demonstration now. He's like, okay. <laughs> and then the thing just disappears right before it kills Riker and Yar. Yeah. And then communicators start working again because there's no shield. There's no, you know, anything blocking the communications. And great. Awesome. Except the thing is still trying to fight them, fight the ship up top. So Jordy's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. You guys are awesome. And we're going to fly this thing into the atmosphere <laughs> so we can see what it is we're fighting. And it's going to be bumpy, but we're going to do it. So they start to okay. enter the atmosphere. And I mean, the whole, the temperature is reaching like ungodly levels, like close to 3,000 degrees. Yeah. But the fire, the fire that's, that you, that's like engulfing the, uh, the enterprise at this point mm -hmm. also forms around this thing that's cloaked. So they see it, they get a shot at it, they shoot it, and boom, it's gone. And they can fly right back out. They beam up the, the away team. Dr. Crusher's okay because she gets the sick bay. And then Picard and Riker walk in and go, hey, where the fuck is the rest of our ship? You better go get it. And Jordy's like, okay, engage. <laughs> and that's the end. That's it. Yeah, this is a good, good episode. I thought I it was so. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it... it, it, it I think it's good because it mixes a little bit of the old school original series sort of like um, on planet action, yeah, with a little more of a richer storyline, yeah. Plus, you 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 do get the back and forth of what's going on up top, you know, mm -hmm. and that's something that's sort of staple to the series, yeah, yeah. You know, keeping and, up with everybody. Uh, he's not engineer yet, but we got engineer in charge, right? Right. We got future yeah. engineer in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, F E I C. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a good a good one. Yeah, I thought so too. And the guy looked totally looked like John Lovitz. He did. Oh my <laughs> god, he he really looked like John Lovitz. It was kind of creepy. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. Um, I don't think there's much more to say on that. No, except I, that Logan is a douchebag. Yeah, Logan is kind of a douchebag, but that's okay because he won't be chief engineer for long. <laughs> um. So, yeah, that's what we saw this week. Um, let's see. Okay, so next week we will see uh, Symbiosis and then the Skin of Evil, followed by We'll Always Have Paris. And that so, will be our last full week of season one. Correct. Because we've only got two more episodes of season one after that. Correct. Uh, I think we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna mix in sing the premiere of two, I think. Because it's not a it's not a two parter or anything, so we should be good. Yeah, it's not. Season two didn't didn't really start off with a bang. It's not like they separated the saucer there too. <laughs> um, so we didn't have any messages or anything, but hailing frequencies are open at five one three asterisk. That's five one three two seven eight seven four seven five. Call now. Google Voice is standing by. <laughs> yes, you can call us anytime, day or night, and. Uh, we won't answer. Google Voice will. You can leave your message there, and we will play it on the air. Your voice will be on a podcast. I know you'll be you'll be almost sort of not really internet famous. <laughs> um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, go to our website for more reviews and stuff, and uh, you can even check out the series that, of videos that I'm still developing, but it's getting there. Um, yes. The, they're, uh, they're literal interpretations of song lyrics. Yes. And the first one was Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles. And it's pretty hilarious. Um, so go you, see it. Did you want to talk about anyone, any more you're going to do yet? No, no, we'll, we'll leave that for, uh, all right, for all a surprise. Right. All right, I think it'll be good. Um, while you're on the website, you can also check out uh, my short story, Dark Matter. Uh, you can go to our store, our YouTube cha channel, our Tumblr. You can find us. And um, we also have an app. We also have an app. For those of you watching the video right now, or you may be even watching it from inside the app, because our app features a video player, shows you some of the latest episodes of Star Trek Asterisk, along with recent Twitter posts and blog posts from thegreenasterisk.com, and a bunch of different ways to find Steve. Plus... You can actually open the Green Asterisk Live, this show live every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. You can open it from right here 
and view it in your browser so you can watch along with us. Ooh. I know. It's pretty nifty. Special. I know. So you guys should totally get that app. It's, it's pretty bitching. <laughs> I know. I wrote it. So uh, that's it. Yeah. Um, I think that's all of the old and new business. Pretty much. All right. That's it from us today. Uh, remember to, uh, what is it that I always say? I forgot. We've, it's right. been so long. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, remember to help control the tribal population. Have your tribal spayed or neutered. Live long and prosper. Goodbye, everybody.